Our fascination with another life form outside of planet Earth is huge, and we would all love to think that there are people living in distant universes who ask the same questions we do. I wonder if this planet is the only one with life on it. But what if another life form has already made contact? What if the government know a lot more than what they let out involving our contact with extraterrestrial life? Now, although they may be keeping secrets for the best interest of the general public, we can't help but be intrigued by what information is being kept from us. Well, here are five cases involving UFOs and possible aliens, where many believe a cover-up is exactly what's happened. Virginia UFO Incident On January the 20th, 1996, an event took place that caused speculation and denial throughout the world. At around 1.30am in Virginia, Brazil, many people witnessed a number of cigar-shaped UFOs in the sky, one of which was seen crashing into a field and catching fire. The fire crew and military were quickly on the scene and it was claimed they pulled an alien out of the burning craft and the debris was quickly removed and flown away in an unmarked plane. The creature of an unknown origin was then handed to the military in a net and rushed to the nearby hospital. When it arrived, the hospital staff were horrified by what they had to treat, but battled to save its life with the military securely guarding the entire area. After several tests and procedures, it died and was transported elsewhere. Now, there have been some conflicting stories about the creature's appearance, but it was thought to have been around one meter tall with large red eyes and leathery brown skin. It also had three fingers and three ridges on its head and smelled very strongly of ammonia. The following day, the town of Virginia was caught up in a media circus as reporters were flooding the site of where the UFOs were spotted and where this apparent creature was captured. Not long after, the fire department admitted an incident had taken place in the early hours, but denied it had anything to do with aliens. Although much later, some of the fire crew involved that night confirmed they had captured a creature that died at the hospital. Afterwards, rumors around the town were rife and hundreds of residents reported the sighting of strange creatures and lights in the sky. Three girls came forward and said they had spotted something hiding in the grass by their home that matched the description of the supposed alien that was taken to hospital. The military continued to deny everything and claimed the three girls had possibly spotted a local disfigured man, but he and his family were appalled by this accusation. They then gave the explanation that a dwarf couple who were expecting a baby was what was seen in the hospital, but did not answer questions about the need for military guard. Weeks after the incident, one of the soldiers who attended the crash site died of an unknown toxic poisoning, and his family are convinced this was a result of whatever happened on January the 20th. No autopsy was carried out, so we may never know what exactly poisoned him. To add to this, a 67-year-old local said she spotted an unknown creature being kept at Virginia Zoo. She links this to the mysterious death of five zoo animals that happened there shortly after, one of which was tested and confirmed to have died from an unknown toxic substance. For months after the incident, people were saying the North American Aerospace Defense Command had warned the Brazilian authority of a UFO flyby, and conspiracy theorists have accused the Brazilian and US government of a massive cover-up. Others think it was just a missile test and it's been blown out of proportion, but whatever happened, there is no denying that there are lots of unanswered questions and some very odd explanations were given. So what exactly do you think happened that night in 1996 in Virginia, Brazil? Rendlesham Forest is located in Suffolk, England, and nowadays it's owned by the Forestry Commission and is a popular area for walkers. But back in December 1980, something happened there that is still talked about to this day. It started when United States Air Force security personnel John Burroughs and Jim Penniston, who were stationed at the nearby Woodridge military base, reported seeing strange lights in the sky above the forest and were sent to investigate as it was suspected a small civilian aircraft had crashed. Instead, what they found was an unknown craft that had landed in the forest. After observing the craft for some time, they got close enough to see symbols on it before it suddenly took off and sped away at high speed. The site was thoroughly analyzed and showed a triangular-shaped indentation in the ground along with scorch marks and significantly raised radiation levels in the area. Two nights after the incident, the unknown craft apparently returned and this time it fired light beams at the men who went to investigate and into an area of the Woodridge RAF base. The incident was investigated by the UK and US authorities, but the UK investigations were inconclusive and concluded the event posed no threat to national security and they would not carry out further investigations. Although in recent years, it's been revealed that the Ministry of Defense UFO files covering the event had conveniently been destroyed without authorization. This and the fact that the US apparently removed various items relating to the case from the nearby airbase without proper authority has aroused the suspicion that something was being covered up. To this day, the case remains unsolved, although it's interesting to note what the former Chief of Defense and Chairman of the NATO Military Committee, Lord Hill Norton's thoughts on it all are. He said this, 
There are only two explanations for what happened that night in Suffolk. The first is that what the people concerned, including Colonel Holt, who was at the time the deputy commander of the base, and a lot of his soldiers, or airmen, they claim that something from outside the Earth's atmosphere landed at their Air Force base. That is one explanation, that it actually happened, as Colonel Holt reported. The other explanation is that it didn't. And in that case, one is bound to assume that Colonel Holt and all his men were hallucinating. My position is perfectly clear. Either of those explanations is of the utmost defence interest. Interesting words coming from a man with such a high ranking as Lord Hill Norton. Now, of course, there are other explanations for what was seen. Maybe it was a super secretive prototype aircraft or drone, and some have suggested the indentations in the ground could have been made by animals. But something just doesn't add up, and there is definitely a lot of withheld evidence surrounding the event. Add this to the ranking of the military personnel who said they witnessed the UFO, and the fact they had nothing to gain from lying, and you can see why the Rendlesham Forest incident is ranked as the most convincing UFO sighting in British history. Lake Winnipeg On February the 18th, 2015, people on the internet were going crazy over several reports that a UFO had crashed into Lake Winnipeg on the Jackson Reservation in Canada. There were also several eyewitness reports that spotted the Canadian military forces using snowmobiles to pull a massive disc-shaped object from the lake. There was an intense military presence around the lake and it was reported that army trucks were lined up to block the view around the supposed crash site. One person claimed they got pictures of all this happening, but they were apparently confiscated by the Canadian military. Locals were forbidden from getting too close and army men were apparently going door to door to talk with residents about what had happened. In response to the increasing media interest, the military stated that it was just a routine exercise, and Lieutenant Colonel Paul Davis, the commanding officer who was involved that day, confirmed that the Canadian Army were taking part in Exercise Arctic Bison, a program to train soldiers to handle emergencies in harsh environments. But he did not deny what the people had seen wasn't real. He said that it was a training craft and had quick takeoff and landing capabilities, and that could have accounted for the unusual lights and UFO sightings. But since no photos of this training craft have ever been shown, and the military quickly closed the book on the event, many have been left thinking that they did not give a plausible explanation for what happened. So was it just a routine exercise, or did something mysterious really crash into that lake and was quickly taken away and kept from the public? What do you think? On the evening of August the 25th, 1974, an object was picked up on American military radars. It was moving through the sky at extraordinary speed in the direction of North America and was first thought to be a meteorite. Then it abruptly changed direction and was on course to enter US airspace over Texas, confirming it couldn't be a meteorite. The US ground crew were baffled as they watched it disappear on the radar whilst traveling over the village of Coyama in Chihuahua, Mexico. Shortly after, a message was broadcast over the Mexican radio that a light aircraft had gone missing over the region of Chihuahua. After search parties were sent out, they found the wreckage of a small civilian plane and a circular craft. However, not long after the Mexican authorities issued the report of the crash, nothing more was said, and despite the US offering help with the incident, the authorities did not want any help. A Mexican recovery team set about clearing the site, but unbeknown to them, they were being closely monitored by an American satellite that was watching what they were up to. Apparently, the Mexican recovery team seemed to be in shock and were not actively making efforts to recover wreckage and the US could also see dead bodies lying around the area. Concerned, the US military moved in to assist despite being rejected and found the Mexican recovery team dead. They had attempted recovery without biochemical protection suits and contacted some kind of deadly virus. The rumor is that the Americans gathered all the dead bodies and crash debris, including a mysterious polished cylinder and took it across the border back to the US before destroying the crash site with explosives. To this day, both the Mexican and US government deny any such event took place, and Koyami newspaper records from that month are missing. The only record of the incident appears to be a small article from a local publication dated October the 27th, 1974, two months after the event. It reported that a group of Mexican soldiers had died during a military transportation. With the information given, it sounds hard to believe, but there are tons of stories from Koyami residents of them witnessing the craft crashing and the strange military behavior following the incident. One local said, We saw the aeroplane which had already crashed and was in flames. I think someone came along and took the evidence. We never heard anything else about what happened out there. 
Pretty interesting, but there is another possible explanation that doesn't involve aliens, and that is that it was a US test missile that hit a small civilian aircraft, and the US went over there and killed the Mexican rescue team to cover their tracks. So was it all a hoax, a US test gone wrong, or did something of alien origin really collide with a small civilian aircraft and crash into the ground in Coyami, Mexico? Roswell No extraterrestrial cover-up video would be complete without the mention of Roswell, possibly the most well-known and talked about UFO incident ever. But what exactly did happen, and why has the government been clearly denying it ever since? It started in the small town of Roswell in New Mexico on July 1947, when reports of a flying disc that had crashed into the desert close to the Walker Air Base was front headlines around the world. It was reported that bodies of aliens had been recovered from the crash site and taken to the infamous Area 51 Air Base in the Nevada desert, where autopsies were carried out. Shortly after, a press release by military authorities read that rumours of a flying disc had become a reality, and that an intelligence officer at the Roswell Army Airfield was fortunate enough to gain possession of a disc. This statement sent news reports around the world crazy, and headlines of this Roswell flying saucer was everywhere. But just 24 hours later, the military changed their story, saying they were mistaken and the flying disc was in fact a weather balloon. Unbelievably, the public seemed to accept this explanation, and very little was said about the crash for many years after. It wasn't until the late 1970s that some military involved started to speak out, and UFOologists and conspiracy theorists went into overdrive, sparking the Roswell case like we all know it today. One of the first people to speak out was Major Jesse Marcel, he was one of the two military personnel to visit the crash site, and the other was Sheridan Cavett, who had always denied ever being there. Marcel described how debris was scattered over a large area and had obviously hit the ground at high speed. He said it was clearly not a weather balloon, aircraft or missile, as he recovered fragments of the debris and described seeing hieroglyphic type symbols painted on it. The metal was also light and paper thin but incredibly strong, unlike anything he had ever seen before. With people continuing to ask questions, the National Security Agency published a report in 1994, 47 years after the incident, saying that the alien bodies were in fact life-sized test dummies. Many saw this as the government just trying to dig its way out of the situation, and it continued to fuel the conspiracy theories. Dozens more witnesses came forward, including a photographer, who claims he was asked to photograph the crash site. He said he was asked to photograph inside a dark tented area, and this is where he saw four identical bodies with large heads and dark skin. After taking the photos, he was debriefed and told to forget everything he had seen. But then someone more credible than all the other witnesses combined spoke out before his death in 2005. Lieutenant Walter Hout, the man who released the original weather balloon statement back in 1947. He left a sworn affidavit. In it, he claimed the weather balloon was a cover-up story for the UFO that had been recovered, and he also confirmed he'd seen alien bodies. So with that, will we ever know what went on? As the years go by and the people involved pass away, we are really only getting further from the truth. And until the next incident, we can only continue to wonder if the Roswell case has been the biggest cover-up in history involving human contact with extraterrestrial beings. So there's five UFO and possible alien stories that have been covered up over the years. That's not to say extraterrestrials have been to Earth, but it is to say that there is probably a lot more out there than what we are being told. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next week for another one.